Hello, in this video we're going to review how to do IXL topic solving one step equations S.5. Before we do some practice questions, I'd like to review a couple of steps that help us solve equations. When solving equations, we have to remember to keep the scale balanced. So step one says to draw a scale line. So we're going to put this little scale next to that step to remind us what that means. Step two says to highlight the variable. So we're going to remember to highlight our variable. And then step three is where we need to try and isolate the variable by doing the inverse order of operations. And that's super important. Normally, we do the order of operations from left to right. But when we're solving equations, we're going to work backwards and go from right to left. Let's look at our IXL topic. 5, solving one-step equations. And let's look at the example question they give us. It says solve for t. And I'm going to draw 1 for my first question, and I'm going to write t plus 1 equals 10. Well, first, I need to draw my scale line. Here's my scale line. And it's a little bit straighter. Next, I'm going to highlight my variable. Here's my variable, t. That is what I want to isolate and get alone. And now we need to go back and do the inverse order of operations. So we have to remember, right here we see that we have a plus 1. We need to think, what is the inverse operation of addition? Subtraction. So we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. When we do this, our ones are going to cancel out because they're additive inverses. We bring everything left on that side straight down. So all that's left is our t. Bring down our equal sign. And now we're going to calculate 10 minus 1, which is 9. We're going to come over to IXL, type in R9, hit submit. Good job. Next question. All right, number 2. S minus 3 equals 1. Okay, first we're going to draw that scale line straight down the middle. Then we're going to highlight our variable. Next, we're going to isolate the variable by doing the inverse order of operations. So I see here that I was given a minus 3. I need to think what is the inverse of subtraction. Yes, addition. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. These are going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with just an S on this side of my equal sign. Bring down my equal sign, calculate 1 plus 3, and I get 4. So S is equal to 4. Wonderful. All right, let's kick it up a notch. Number 3. We have 3 equals K minus 2. We're going to start by drawing that scale line. Now, just because the variable is on this side of the equal sign does not mean that our steps change. We want to isolate that k. So we're going to do the inverse order of operations. We see that we have a minus 2. We know that the opposite of subtraction is addition. So we're going to add 2 to both sides of our equation. These are going to cancel out. Bring what's left straight down. So K comes straight down. K is alone now. It's very happy. Equals. Calculate 3 plus 2. That should give us 5. We're going to type 5 in IXL. And go to the next question. Alright, kicking it up a notch again. We now have 3V equals 6. First things first, draw our scale line. Let's highlight our variable, which is a v. Now we need to think to ourselves, how are the 3 and the v attached to each other? Well, they're attached by multiplication. What is the inverse operation of multiplication? Division. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. These will reduce to 1, which leaves v all alone. And now calculate 6 divided by 3, 
which should give us an answer of 2. Very well done. Okay, let's try a couple more. We have f minus 9 equals 2. We're going to draw that line down the middle, highlight the variable, and now we're going to do the inverse order of operations to isolate the variable. It's a minus 9. We know the opposite of subtraction is addition, so we're going to add 9 to both sides. When we do that, these cancel out. They're gone. F is now all alone. Bring it straight down. Calculate 2 plus 9, which gives us 11. We're going to type 11 in. Hit submit. We got it correct. Great job. Number 6. Q minus 2 equals 9. Same process. Whoops. Draw our scale line. Highlight our variable. And now let's do the inverse order of operations. Again, we have a minus 2, so we're going to add 2 to both sides. These will cancel out. Q will be all by itself. And 9 plus 2 is 11. Again, what a coincidence. All right, now we're getting to the good stuff. Number 7. We have S divided by 3 equals 4. We're going to draw that line, highlight that variable, and now let's talk about the inverse operation that we have to perform here. We see that S and 3 are being divided. So we need to think to ourselves, what is the inverse of division? Yes, multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 3. When we do that, these will reduce to 1 and s will be alone. And now we'll calculate 4 times 3, which will give us 12. So s will be equal to 12. All right, number 8, w minus 12 equals 3. We're going to draw our scale line. I think this might be a little easier. Highlight our variable. And now let's do the inverse of minus 12, which will be plus 12 to both sides. These will cancel. W is alone. Calculate 3 plus 12, and we get 15. Type it in over here, hit submit, and we go on our way. Let's try a couple more together before I set you free. Number 9. We have J plus 77 equals 87. Draw our scale line, highlight our variable. Okay, we see a plus 77, so we're going to minus 77 from both sides. Draw your line, cancel out your 77s. J is going to equal 10. Type in 10 and we go on. Okay, number 10. We have D divided by 7 equals 5. We're going to draw our scale line, highlight that variable, and now talk about the inverse order of operations we have to use. We see division, so we know the inverse is multiplication, so we're going to multiply both sides by 7. These will cancel. We get D equals the calculation of 5 times 7, which is 35. Type 35 in, and we're good. Okay, let's try two more, and then you can try them all by yourself. So T minus 12 equals 50. Draw our line, highlight our variable. Inverse of minus 12 is going to be plus 12, so we're adding 12 to both sides. These cancel and t is going to be equal to 62. Submit. And perfect way to end our practice today, 80 equals 10 times z. We draw our line, highlight our variable. 
Now the inverse of multiplication, division. Divide by 10, divide by 10. These will cancel, z is alone, and z is equal to 80 divided by 10, which is 8. We're going to type that in just to make sure we're correct. And there we go. Go ahead and practice all by yourself and make sure you get an 80 or higher.